The story begins with our protagonist seeing a news article on the internet stating that the daddy gun style, according to some users, is rooming male mentality, and that in the past, women were considered intelligent and capable of reaching the heavens, but this style is tearing down that image. While reading all this nonsense on the internet, our hero wonders exactly where he has reincarnated. It has been two days since he arrived in this new world, and he still hasn't gotten used to the heavy body. Before coming to this world, he was the emperor of his generation. Every time he visits a news site, he only finds reports of robberies. In that world, there were no cultivators, just a modern world where the concepts of men and women were inverted. The power of that demon he had fought was so immense that they lost their bodies, but he survived by sheer luck. It was a miracle that his spirit managed to travel to another world and find a recently dead body to reincarnate into. Speaking of which, his name seemed to be Lin Mo. In his memories, he was a rich kid who studied at a first-class private school. Lin had no idea if that demon had also come back to life, but either way, before recovering his strength, he needed to live as Lin Mo. For that reason, even an emperor needed to go to school. Getting dressed, the young man left his room. Looking around, he assumed that his family wasn't bad at all. Even so, the house was smaller than his last fish tank. In his memories, it seemed that his parents died in an accident, and his grandmother had Alzheimer's bedridden in the hospital. His distant aunt took on the role of guardian after he was abandoned, and together with her, his family also moved. Before he knew it, everything that belonged to him was already his aunt's and his quality of life had deteriorated. Walking through the house, the boy approached a table. The one with hair like it was licked by a cow was named Yangjin, and the other was Zixuan. The boy's aunt appeared saying that he arrived just in time to discuss his studies and that Yanwu was right, mentioning that it was a joke. Hearing the name his aunt mentioned, the boy became thoughtful. In the memories of his body, his grandmother arranged a marriage for him before she developed Alzheimer's and the girl's name was the same. However, she was shocked when she learned about it and with disdain, asked how she could go out with someone as fat as him. While crossing the street, he was accidentally run over by a truck. And when this happened, his aunt cancelled the engagement, thinking that it was unbelievable because the emperor of his generation would have to marry someone from this world based on another woman's decision. Still in the kitchen, his aunt asked if he was listening. The boy said it was nothing and told her not to arrange her marriage for him again. Observing Lin's expression, the woman thought you seemed different. Unexpectedly, he appeared to have an inexplicable aura of tyranny. Then Lin sat at the table, thinking that he had no appetite since starting his diet, but sir, this body wouldn't starve, he had to take it easy. Taking a piece of food, he thought it smelled good. Then his cousin asked why he didn't study abroad since his companions knew how much he expressed his love to others. Len wondered why he needed to talk to those insects when this emperor reigned for thousands of years, but as he needed to play the role of a normal person, he said he wouldn't go now because he was happy with that school. The boy said it didn't matter which school he attended as long as he got good grades. Continuing to eat, Len thought he didn't want to talk to him. One hour later and the protagonist was inside a car and the person driving announced that they had arrived. His cousin, in turn, asked Lin not to get out together with him. With a look of disdain, the protagonist stared at him, leaving the boy scared by that gaze. Getting out of the car. Next, Lin was already standing in front of a building, mentioning that the architecture of that world was excellent. However, there were some issues. Each of those men stood out a lot as they were showing their pale legs, but at least the women seemed normal. In the background, two girls were talking about the protagonist's brother's legs, saying they are beautiful. With disdain, the boy thought that it was so unpleasant that it made him almost vomit. However, he should forget about that because he didn't know if that demon was still alive and besides, he needed to strengthen his body before she appeared. While locking through the school, Lin found his classroom. In the background, someone seemed to mock the protagonist, saying his fiancé was there. His wife was sitting at the table while two girls were talking to her. Observing the protagonist, she didn't seem to like his presence. Lin thinks it was amazing how mortals could be so unbearable. The boy heads towards his desk, leaving Yanua confused. While sitting, he wonders how he could resume his cultivation somehow. Someone grabs his shoulder, saying he should believe when he said he couldn't like her. Reality wasn't the same as on TV, mentioning that she seemed mature but should be deceived by the things she said. Remembering the girl, Lin thinks she should be that body's classmate. Continuing to speak, the girl questions how she could like a second-class person. Seeing Lin still silent, she supposes she had said too much, saying he still had a chance with Yanhui, who might like him if he lost some weight. Then the protagonist asks her to say what she wanted to say. The girl asks how he knew she was plotting something and Lin mentions that she wasn't that kind to act that way. Then the girl really wanted to ask a favor, asking him to play a game with her, saying it wouldn't take long, and as a reward, she would introduce him to a girl more beautiful than Yanhui. There was a mountain that couldn't be reached alone but she had contacts to help climb directly, so she was thinking of going during the summer, mentioning that the place was impressive at night and he would regret it if he refused to go there. Lin thinks of a rumor that high mountains attract spiritual energy, and that mountain was the closest to that region. 
so there was a high chance it had energy at the top. Also, it was a great opportunity for that body to lose weight by climbing the mountain. Accepting the proposal, he mentions he wasn't good at games, making her happy. The girl says there would be a match against an idiot from class 3 who loves pretending to be good, so after class, they could use the computers in the computer club. Sometime later in the computer room, the girl mentions she had reserved the room just for them, so no one would bother them. Sitting in the chair, she asks Celine to log into a user account. Then the protagonist enters his password, successfully logging into his account. Inside the game, the boy looks at a window, saying it was a competitive action game with an immortal theme. The girl appears, saying she had called the boss of that realm because he would help them. Then the boss appears, mentioning that she really brought a man, apparently liking the protagonist because he was her friend's classmate. Cutting the atmosphere, she says she would start the 3v3 PvP mode. Starting to run, the girl asks them to be quiet while she takes out the enemy team. Then the protagonist's friend asks him to hide while she goes to check. Lin thinks that only legendary beings in his world could be immortal, a cultivation and everything from his world were similar to the game. Supposing there was a chance that world had immortals, so we should be careful. While sitting, a notification appears that someone had died. That girl from before appears apparently stressed. Starting to run again, she says she made a mistake and now would take revenge. However, she ends up dying again, repeating the cycle of running again but now the protagonist's friend would help. Even so, it doesn't help at all. Outside the game, the protagonist's friend is furious because not even the boss of that realm was managing to defeat that person. Telling the protagonist to be careful because Flying Feather was on the way but Lin was completely calm. While running, the boy thinks he had developed his fighting instincts for thousands of years, capable of using them even in games. During all that, the other team was still chasing the protagonist while two girls fawned over the person playing. Then the girl says he couldn't escape her. Looking back, Lin sees someone following him. Stopping running, he thinks he was an emperor and therefore had never been pursued. Noticing that Lin had seen her, the woman quickly hides. The protagonist in turn affirms that it was a quick reaction and that body couldn't win since in that game the attacks were hard to use. Outside the game, Lin seemed to use an ability. The more in observing the protagonist mentions that he was a novice who had no idea where he was. Therefore, that was a positive point as she approached the boy. Quickly, Lin uses the keyboard and mouse. Wanji an attack at the woman. Suddenly he hits her and a notification of a dead player appears. On the other side, they were surprised that the protagonist managed to win. Standing up from her chair, Lin's friend says she didn't know he was that good. Noticing him still, she asks if he is okay. Lin thinks he had no idea that a body like that could be so damaged by a simple use of spiritual energy. Returning to the game, one of his friends asked to come back, but she didn't have more time, thinking that she had finally found him, wondering why he always kept running away. But this time, she would kill him going towards the protagonist. Meanwhile, the boy kept running nonstop. Noticing the girl had found him again, he thinks he should boost the lower part of his body again, throwing his sword towards the woman. And she questions if the boy wanted to hit her from that far away. At the same instant, her leg gets hit. She ends up falling to the ground. Looking at the sword in her leg, she wonders if it was a warning to stop following him. Outside the game, one of his friends says they should stop chasing him. The girl, in turn, asks if she knew the other side, asking to contact them right away. Sitting in the chair, she murmurs the protagonist's name. On the other side, a protagonist's friend receives a call from those girls wanting to see her. Approaching Lid and his friend says he was amazing, suggesting they play a few more matches but the boy didn't want to play anymore, asking not to forget the promise he made before. Sometime later, Lin was already near his house. In his room, the boy lies down mentioning that his body was very fragile. The next day while going to school, his cousin calls him, asking him to explain to his classmates that the marriage with Yan Hui wasn't real. Then the protagonist says there was no need to explain what was false. While walking away, his cousin says he was very arrogant. Inside the classroom, his friend notices his presence, asking if he knew who that girl from before was named Zhao Yutan. Mentioning that, surprisingly, she was from their school. It seemed he went through a lot since he lost his love. Mentioning that the girl wanted to see him and he didn't need to worry because she wouldn't do anything to a guy. But even before finishing the sentence with a threatening look, the protagonist observes him. Suddenly, he doesn't finish the sentence. Mentioning that it wasn't Moma Baby. Then a girl walks towards the protagonist's table. That was Yen Wei, saying they needed to clarify things and should say it was just a fake marriage. Lin's friend says she was going too far after all. Lin Mo was just a boy and shouldn't have more compassion. The girl questions what that had to do with anything if she liked the protagonist. Entering the conversation, the boy says that whether it was true or false, there was no possibility of him being with the girl, asking her to leave. Yan Wei says he was being very arrogant and didn't know how much it bothered her so he should never say he was going to marry again. In the background, that boy says Lin was very strong because he hadn't cried until now, and the other guy says that if it were him, he would leave the school immediately. Then someone enters the room. That was the girl who had lost before, accompanied by two more people. In the background, people mention that was Zhao Yutan. Rumors said she caused a lot of trouble, and everyone who got involved with her left the school. Approaching Lin, the girl calls the protagonist. Apparently, Yan Wei was her sister, asking if she wanted something. 
Then the girl calls Momo Baby, which was the protagonist's profile name in the game, asking him to follow her. Meanwhile, Lin, irritated, remains seated in the chair, thinking that he was an emperor and not Momo Baby. In the background, those two boys ask how he got close to Yuteng and why she was calling him Momo Baby. His friend, in turn, apologizes because the girl wanted to play with the protagonist alone. He just needed to go out with her, and then he could do whatever he wanted. Leaving the room, Lin murmurs that those people were very annoying. At the door of his class, Yuteng waited for him, thinking she didn't expect that Momo Baby was a man instead of a woman. Stating that it was fun because in the past women fought the combat skirts, but now it has become a norm for them. Then she starts asking Lin several questions, wondering if he was the one who defeated her in that game. She orders him to find her after class as she wanted to duel with him alone. But Lin says he didn't play that game and had only won by luck, saying he was going back to class. Irritative Yu Tang wonders if the boy didn't know who she was. Then the other girl affirms that it was not surprising Lin wasn't afraid of her since he had no love left in his heart because he had been abandoned. Yu Tang in turn gives the order for her to bring the boy at noon. Returning to the classroom, a group of boys ask what Yu Tang had sent to him. His friend says the girl had been attracted to the protagonist and just wanted to play with him alone, telling him not to worry because she would take him to Wuzhu Mountain on the weekend and also arrange some girls. With a threatening look, Lin tells her not to bring anyone else, imagining supposedly illicit things the girl feels embarrassed, saying many things and that he shouldn't be interested in her. Then another girl appears saying that Yu Tang was waiting for the protagonist. However, Lin was no longer in the room. In the cafeteria, Lin was eating while people in the background mocked him, saying he ate too much. At the counter, the boy asks the server to wrap it up to go. Leaving the place, the protagonist thinks he still hadn't gotten used to that noisy world, and he shouldn't get upset because of that. In the background, someone was approaching the boy, murmuring various things about that body dying in a year, and if he wanted to survive, he should merge with her, and as a reward, she would fulfill his desires. While locking, people around observe her beauty. The woman says she had made the right decision. From now on, his 18 years of life would be part of hers. Mentioning it was a pity that all the joys and sorrows he had experienced were just a drop in the ocean for her. After working hard for so long, she managed to defeat the Emperor, but it wasn't the ending she desired and now the only thing she could do was revive the demon world. But the Emperor had many tricks up his sleeve so he wouldn't die easily, hence, she should be careful since he might have come to that world. Affirming that this world was very interesting, she never bound her father's approval in the demon world, no matter how hard she tried. Just because she was a woman, those men looked down on her and only wanted to possess her until the day she put on a mask of evil spirits, killing them so they would fear her. However, in that place, men are at a disadvantage and cultivation wasn't bad despite the spiritual power being scarce. Moreover, she was beautiful to the point that men followed her, but it had been a while since that fat boy was after her, and as a woman, it was good to be direct. Looking back, their eyes meet. The girl, in turn, asked him to stop following her because there would be nothing between them. However, our boy walks past her, ignoring the poor girl. Embarrassed, the girl thinks she should regain her strength before leaving that world, mentioning that the boys in that world were very shy. So Lin must have been embarrassed, refusing to admit he was following her. Therefore, he hadn't said anything to avoid embarrassment. Returning to the protagonist, he was apparently annoyed, wondering why that girl was following him. Noticing Lin was heading to the rooftop, she thinks he should find another place to be alone. But remember is that normal students never went there, people in that world are spiritually and physically weak, questioning if Lin was going to jump off the rooftop, however, that wasn't her business. Still, she remained bothered, remembering that the friend of the original owner of her body had also jumped off a building. Heading towards the rooftop, she thinks she would fulfill the will of that body. Arriving at the top of the building, she sees the protagonist at the edge of the rooftop. Then she tries to use an ability to immobilize him, however, she'd have forgotten she had no spiritual power. Meanwhile, Lin calmly thinks that it was quite cold up there, so it would be better to go down for lunch. Then the girl appears, asking the protagonist to wait. While grabbing his belly, Lin asks what she was doing. Lifting the boy, she asks the protagonist to come down, but she is surprised by the boy's weight, falling to the ground with him, where she ends up breaking a rib. On top of her, Lin says he didn't even have time to respond, questioning what she was doing. The girl says she was just helping because he was going to jump in an isolated place, thinking she had broken a rib because of him. Surprised, Lin thinks that the girl thought he was going to jump off the building, supposing it was because in that world men were fragile while women were strong, extending his hand to help her, asking her to control her imagination because he had only gone to get some air and had no intention of jumping off the building. Besides, he wasn't interested in her, leaving the girl embarrassed, telling him never to appear in front of her again. As he walks away, Lin thinks that woman had refused the help of an emperor without even knowing, and since she didn't want help, there was nothing he could do. Back in the classroom, his friend asks where he had been, mentioning that Yu Tang was looking for him and telling him not to leave after class. The protagonist in turn says it was all her fault, so she should solve it herself. But the girl says she would go with him after class to play with Yu Tang, and if he let her win, it should be enough to leave him alone. 
Even so, Lin says he wouldn't go, thinking he didn't want to lose to a little girl, even in a game. His friend keeps trying to convince the protagonist, but the boy says the problem was hers. The girl saying she would do anything for him. Lin still decides he wouldn't go, so his friend thinks she was in trouble. Sometime later, the day passes. Standing up, the protagonist tells them to leave and not to forget their promise at Wushu Mountain. While walking away, Lin remembers something. Recalling that he had fallen on top of that girl, wondering if she was okay. The human body is very fragile, so she probably ended up breaking some ribs. Since human lives in that world were precious, he could end up being arrested, which would cause a huge problem. Looking for the girl, Lin thinks he should check on her. Meanwhile, she was still on the rooftop, stating that that body was very weak and couldn't get up. Besides, it was very windy, and she was hungry, thinking about shouting for help but wouldn't do it, even if she died. She didn't expect that could happen. An invincible demon who defeated the emperor was taken down by a fat boy, and someone approaches the girl. Noticing it was Lin, the girl asks why he came back. Kneeling down, the protagonist observes her, thinking she didn't look well. Then he places his hand on her back, saying she had broken some ribs, mentioning she was very weak and needed to exercise, but the girl says it happened because of him. While Lin takes off his coat, the empress, embarrassed, asks what the protagonist was going to do. Covering her, the boy mentions it was Wendy on the rooftop, asking her to wear his coat. Making a call, he says he would call an ambulance, but the empress says she didn't need his jacket. The protagonist already knew she didn't want to wear his jacket because he was fat, but she remembered that her body was fragile and could take it off when the ambulance arrived. However, for the girl, it wasn't for that reason. She didn't expect the protagonist to be so kind. His oral has a standard of beauty for men, thinking she didn't know why Lin helped her, but would keep an eye on him anyway. Sometime later, the ambulance arrives. While the empress is on the stretcher, two girls notice the commotion. Embarrassed, the girl thinks she would never forget that day. At night, the protagonist was already near his house. Entering, his cousin asks why Yu Tang had come to talk to him. Then Lin says he would say it only once. Zixuan, in turn, thinks that Fat Boy had a sharp look, mentioning he was more aggressive lately, saying that Yu Tang must not have gone after him on her own and must have caused some trouble. Because of that, he would ask his mother to throw him out of the house. Ben Lin, questioning what he was talking about, mentions that it was his house. Zixuan, about to slap the boy, says he get asked for it. With no effort, Lin grabs his hand. While squeezing his arm, he thinks he was very weak, so weak that it wasn't even worth continuing. On a floor, the boy says it hurt, going to tell his father that Lin had hit him. Appearing in the kitchen, his father asks how he dared to hit his cousin, saying he would deal with him. But with no effort, the protagonist also grabs the man's hand, surprised that Lin Mo had grabbed him so easily. Lin in turn says he would give him advice to never mess with him, crying the man says he was an abuser, calling the protagonist's aunt, saying he was causing trouble. Arriving in the room, she tells him to be quiet. Staring at Lin, she thinks the boy was different, saying she didn't want to know what happened and just to apologize to his uncle. Lin in turn thinks that she was the first person to ask an emperor to apologize, saying he wasn't wrong and therefore wouldn't apologize. However, she says that if he didn't apologize, he wouldn't receive his vacation allowance, but the boy says he didn't meet it. Entering his room, Lin wonders if she was talking about money, remembering that without it, he wouldn't be able to go to Wuxu Mountain. He had nothing to sell in that house and no savings. Thinking of selling some clothes and shoes, Lin opens his computer, surprised that a buyer responded so quickly. Three girls in the comments of the post were asking personal questions and if the items still had his scent. Surprised, the protagonist thinks he was never afraid, not even of demons, but those women scared him. Even so, he would sell to make money, wondering why money was the first problem because he should first regain his strength. The body is the foundation of cultivation and if he could absorb spiritual energy, money wouldn't matter. A few minutes later, the boy was completely exhausted and without spiritual power, the body couldn't handle it, so he had to forge his body from scratch. Then he receives a call from his friend, saying she wanted to talk about Wuzhu Mountain, mentioning that her friend said he was going there and asked if it wasn't better to go another gay. Lin says it wasn't a problem and they could go anyway, so the girl says the bus would leave in the morning so he shouldn't be late. The next day, the protagonist goes to the table for breakfast. Zixuan asks why he woke up early and if Yan Wei hadn't asked to go out with him, but the boy remains silent. His cousin in his thoughts wonders why he wasn't responding and if he was planning something, saying he could continue eating like a beggar because his bus had arrived. Near the bus, Yan Hu calls the boy, saying she was scared so they should get on quickly. Inside the bus, she says Lin has been different since she rejected him, mentioning that last night he pushed to Zixuan while arguing with his father. Yan Hui, in turn, says she always knew it wasn't a good idea to take Lin to Wuzhu Mountain, affirming that he was also going and the other girl says he looks like a whale pacifier, so he wouldn't be able to climb. Then the protagonist's friend appears, saying they were in the same class and shouldn't talk about him like that. The girl thinks she didn't expect Lin to come, but he wasn't afraid of Yan Hui, so she would stay with him so he wouldn't feel alone. Then Lin appears on the bus, while going to his seat, Yan Hui stops the protagonist, asking why he pushed to Zixuan. Interfering in the matter, the protagonist's friend says it must be a misunderstanding because Lin was a calm person, 
calling the boy to the front of the bus because it had a beautiful view. At the front of the bus, she asks the driver to stop at the next stop to pick up another person. The protagonist in turn hopes that when they reach Wuzhu Mountain, he wouldn't be disappointed. Looking to the side, he notices a girl riding a motorcycle, stopping the motorcycle in front of the bus. Suddenly, the bus is forced to break. Removing a helmet, it was Yu Tang. The protagonist's friend gets nervous, fearing she stopped the bus to go after Lin Mo. Leaving her seat, she says she would talk to her. Questioning what she was doing there, Yu Tang says she was looking for that fat boy. Observing Lin, the girl mentions that if it weren't for his size, she would never have noticed him. Then everyone starts laughing at the protagonist. Yu Tang says he shouldn't go to Wuzhu Mountain and that it was better to go with her to play video games. And if he did that, she could make his wife return to the relationship. What the boy even wants to know about it? Asking her to leave him alone. Then Yu Tang asks if she was bothering him, thinking that if it weren't for him, she would never have lost even once in her life. Questioning if he would go with her or not. Then Lin seems surprised, noticing that the girl's necklace had a bit of aura, thinking that his refining technique was a bit poor, but that was something difficult to craft in that world, wondering if cultivators still existed, saying he would play with her after climbing the mountain. Then the protagonist's friend suggests they all go to the mountain. Yu Tang asks if Lin was really willing to climb that place. It seems he wasn't popular and was fat, so she would watch him try to climb that mountain. Meanwhile, another guy appears saying he has a seat next to him, suggesting she sit beside him. But the girl doesn't care and calls one of her friends to take care of her motorcycle, asking if Lin had that game because she wanted to play with him now. However, the protagonist says that if he won and he wanted something in return. Accepting the offer, Yu Tang says that if she lost, he would have to be her servant forever, ignoring another guy while talking to Lin. Then the other man asked Zixuan if Lin was good at games and why Yu Tang insisted on playing with him. Zixuan, in turn, thinks he has no idea what's going on and the protagonist is a nuisance. Back to Lin, the boy was playing that game with Yu Tang again. Noticing an opening, he prepares an attack. Yu Tang is surprised because he was attacking at high speed. Taking the hit head-on, the system informs that Momo Baby is the winner. Outside the game, Yu Tang still can't believe she lost, asking how he managed to have such incredible precision. But the protagonist says every move of his was calculated, and that game is very easy. Then the girl thinks he was a genius, but little did she know he used his cultivation to stimulate his brain. Since Lin had won, he should ask for what he wanted. Lim in turn asks for 10,000 in cash. Yu Thing asks if that was all because she could make his ex fiancee come back to him and if he was willing, he should become her training partner from today. Ignoring the girl, Lin still asks for a transfer thinking he had secured the money to forge that body. Taking out her phone, Yu Tang makes the transfer. Moreover, she adds her phone number so he should answer as she called. But he shouldn't call her or give her number to anyone. A protagonist thinks that even as an emperor, he didn't have such arrogance as hers. Standing up from the chair, the girl says there was very little space, ordering Yan Hui to move to the front making the girl nervous thinking she was doing that after so much effort to sit next to Zixuan. Standing up, Yu Tang tells her to hurry up. Yan Hui thinks about scolding her sister but can't do it in front of everyone. Then Zixuan says that Lin wanted to say something to her so she should see what it was. Standing up, the girl goes towards the protagonist. In his thoughts, the boy is happy because he could sit next to Yu Tang. Trying to introduce himself to the girl, Zixuan only gets a sharp rebuke from Yu Tang, telling him to shut up. Thinking that if she knew that boy was so insufferable and wore so much perfume, she would have preferred to sit with the protagonist. Arriving at Wuzhu Mountain, the students are surprised by how high the place is. Then the protagonist's friend tells everyone to follow her and not lag behind. Half an hour later, Lin Mo, observing those boys, thinks they were much worse off than he was. When he managed to recover his powers, he would punish them every day for centuries. The protagonist's friend, noticing that no one was there to help him, thinks she couldn't assist him because if someone saw her with him, she might get strange looks. Twenty minutes later, Lin Mo was still climbing the mountain, thinking he couldn't go any further because he had the least endurance in the group. Those boys seemed delicate but were actually quite fit. Noticing that Lin couldn't continue, his friend thinks that since she brought him to that place, she should help him. Asking if the boy needed help, but Lin Mo says she could go on her way, because he could still continue. Thinking that this exhaustion was nothing compared to the things he went through in his previous life, the protagonist's friend wonders why he was making such an effort for that. Saying sure go ahead, and if he couldn't climb anymore, he could let her know. People in the background are surprised because the protagonist had already climbed halfway. The other boys, already exhausted, couldn't continue. While thinking about giving up, Lin Mo, determined, continues to climb. Near the top, the protagonist notices a group of people returning. The other girl is surprised because he managed to get there alone and was very resilient. The protagonist's friend saying it was very high, suggests they go back and go to a restaurant. However, Lin says they could go because he would reach the top. Irritated, his friend questions if he wanted to die, but the other girl says to just let him go. Twenty minutes later, the boy finally reaches the top of the mountain. Yu Tang, who was already at the top, is surprised that he actually managed to climb, but it was a pity that he lagged behind most of the time and when he reached the top, the others had already returned and he had been alone the whole time. Looking up, the boy observed the stars. 
Thinking that up there had a lot of ki, although it was not enough to recover his power, at least he could start training. With this, he would get ahead of that venerable demon. As long as he had the opportunity to train, no matter the time, he would always come back up there. Then Yu Tang touches his shoulder, asking what he was doing, and the protagonist says he was just looking at the view. The girl thinks he is very annoying and doesn't talk much. And a protagonist in his thoughts asserts that in his world as an emperor, he would have killed her many times already. Then Yu Tang tells him to come down because that place was hers now. Lin mentions that he was very tired, so she should help him down. Yu Tang says she wouldn't bother him any more that day, handing the protagonist his snack. From now on, he would be her companion. And since she was bored, she would go down first. Opening the wrapper, he realizes it was leftovers from the girl's snack. Mentioning that in his previous life he had eaten many beast carcasses, so then that was nothing. Sitting down to meditate, the boy thinks he should start by cleansing the marrow. Sometime later it gets late. The protagonist's friend on the phone with him asks if the boy really wasn't coming back. Lin Mo says that place was pleasant, so he would stay during the holidays. Fiddling with his phone, he thinks he should notify his aunt. Calling her without any ceremony, he already informs her that he would be away for a few days during the holidays. Ending the call, the receptionist asks what he could do for the protagonist. Then the young man asks how much an individual room costs for two months, and the man says it was 8,000 yen. Thus, Lin Mo continued his training during the holidays. Day after day, climbing the mountain nonstop. The training was rigorous, but the fruits would be worth it. Then two months pass and a protagonist's friend says she was arriving and if his bags were ready. Thinking that she couldn't talk to him during the holidays and because of that, Yu Tang was always bothering her. So she had to take him to Yu Tang no matter the circumstances. Meanwhile, Lin Mo looks at himself in the mirror, thinking that after two months, the spiritual energy in his body was still weak. Appearing like the complete Jiga Chat, he says he should still continue being a mediocre student. Some time later, the protagonist's friend says she finally managed to find him, but when she looks at the boy, she's surprised by his beauty, supposing she had mistaken the room, imagining having a family with that man. With a remorseful look, a protagonist notices the girl staring at him. Embarrassed, she starts to leave, thinking the protagonist must think she was a pervert. Then Lin asks for she was going because she wasn't mistaken. The girl, in turn, asks if he was a friend of Lin Mo, but he says he was Lin Mo. However, she doesn't believe his words, supposing they had the same name. But the protagonist says he had just lost some weight, asking why she was so surprised, although the boy had changed drastically. Everything about him was completely different. Grabbing the bags, Lin says they should go. Then the girl thinks that from his cold look and way of speaking, he was definitely Lin Mo, thinking she wasn't dreaming and the boy had changed a lot, affirming that it was worth not treating him badly in the past, asking him to carry her backpack. However, another girl appears, offering help to the protagonist, quickly. His friend approaches the car, opening the door for the young man. Inside the car, she mentions that he now looked very handsome, asking if he had been climbing the mountain all this time. His efforts certainly paid off, and when Yanwe saw him now, she would regret breaking up with him. So now many girls would be kind to him, but he had to understand that it was all falsehood, so Lin asked her to just shut up. Afraid, his friend wonders if the protagonist hated her for not climbing the mountain with him. If she had been kinder before, he might have fallen in love with her, and they would have a perfect love. However, there was still an opportunity because she was still the closest to Lin, saying that he must have been through a lot and that they should go out to eat something, but the boy just wanted to be taken home. Some time later, the young man was already at his house and his friend says she would see him in a few days. Then the other girl asks if she wasn't going to take the protagonist to see Yutan, but Yun Shu says she wouldn't take him anymore, thinking she couldn't take a beautiful lamb to the wolf's den. The only thing she needed to do was use Lin's account to play. Then Lin Mo enters his house. The whole family is surprised by his appearance, asking who he was and how he had entered, but the boy says he is Lin Mo and had just lost weight. Even so, Vesikshuan doesn't believe it was him because even if he lost weight, he wouldn't be that handsome. Then his mother asks him to stop yelling, asking if the boy had had some surgery. The boy mentions that she had all his money, so he couldn't have done that, questioning if he would receive his allowance that semester. His aunt said if she would cover all his expenses and also buy a new uniform. But if he did anything bad to his cousin or uncle again, she wouldn't give him another cent. Standing up, Lin says he was already satisfied and his aunt thinks he really was the protagonist. The next day, the young man was in a car with his cousin going to school. Sixuan asks why the driver was driving slower this time, so the girl says she would go faster, thinking she couldn't help but look at the protagonist because he was very handsome. So she just wanted to keep observing the boy. Then Lin gets out of the car, everyone around is surprised by his beauty, wondering who that boy was. His cousin, envious, questions why Lin was drawing so much attention. Noticing that the girls were taking pictures of him, the young man thinks something wasn't right. Soon after, he enters his classroom. Heading to his seat, another girl wonders if he was a transfer student. Lib in turn thinks he had just lost weight, but just because of that, he was already a little better than normal. However, it usually wouldn't attract so much attention, wondering if it was because of his aura. At the classroom door, a commotion was happening. Yuting, holding the protagonist's friend, says she would give her three minutes to bring that fat boy to her, 
But Yunshu says there was no fat boy anymore. The girl mentions that she would regret it if she continued lying, so Yunshu says she would tell her where Lin was. Pointing to the protagonist, she says he was Lin who had lost weight over the holidays. Observing the boy, Yu Tang seems not to believe it. Furious, she says that guy could never be Lin, but Yunshu was telling the truth. The protagonist in turn says the girl wasn't lying, saying she'd be trained with him whenever she wanted and to meet after class. Then Yu Tang asks who he was. Again, Yunshu says he was Lin and had lost weight over the holidays while climbing Wuzhu Mountain. In her thoughts, Yu Tang wonders if it really was the boy, questioning if it really was that fat boy while the boy asks her not to call him that anymore. Noticing he had the same voice and behavior, she affirms that he really was Lin. Sagan didn't matter if he was fat or thin because he should wait for her after class. Yunshu says it had been someone else who had played with her before and Lin had joined just to complete the group so the protagonist wasn't very good at games. With a threatening look, Yu Tang observes her, asking if she dared to say that Lin didn't know how to play, mentioning that yesterday she had used Lin's account to try to deceive her, so she was the most arrogant person who tried to do that. While leaving, Yunshu asks for a chance to explain. Thinking that now Yu Tang would never leave her alone, two girls appear asking how she knew it was Lin. Even if it was the boy, he couldn't have become so handsome, so he must have had some surgery. Then the teacher appears, asking everyone to take their seats because class was about to start, saying she was curious to know how their holidays were. However, she ends up being surprised, asking who that student in the back was. Yunshu, raising her hand, says it was Lin who had lost weight during the holidays. Surprised, the teacher says he had changed a lot and must have worked hard to achieve it, asking if the boy won this sit up front that semester. Quickly, a girl responds no, mentioning that Yunshu had promised they would change places with her. Another says she had grown a lot during the holidays, so she should also go to the back. Yunshu thinks they were trying to take her seat but wouldn't let that happen. The teacher, asking them to stop arguing, says the first person to change places would be Yunshu. While two girls remove her from her seat, the protagonist's friend pleads to let her stay in her seat. Another guy asks Zixuan if Lin had had surgery to become so handsome, and the boy responds that there was no other way than that. The teacher says the odd numbers would stay in the same position and the evens would change with the adjacent ones, saying that Li Jiang would sit with Lin. The other girl asks if Jiang was really going to sit with the protagonist, then the girl says it's okay because she couldn't let Yunshu have him for herself. Looking at his classmate beside him, the young man notices that he was a bit chubby and quiet, so there would be no one to bother him. Yunshu, sitting at the front, cries for losing her seat. Then Lin Mo stands up from his seat. A group of girls start flattering the young man, saying they would be exhausted if they had to climb the mountain every day, and another asks if he could give some advice to her brother. Yunshu thinks they are all fake because when Lin was frat, no one talked to him saying that unlike them, she never treated the protagonist badly when they first met. Lin coldly asks them to get out of his way. Quickly, the girls make room. Another girl says that the protagonist looks very handsome with that attitude. Noticing Zixuan getting stressed, the girl mentions that he was jealous, but it wouldn't help because they preferred Lin. Back to the protagonist, the young man was in the cafeteria. A girl waves at him, saying he could sit in her place because she had to leave, but Lin declines the offer thinking he wasn't sure if it was safe near those morals, mentioning that the eyes of those women were nothing less than deceitful. In the background, Yan Hui questions if it was really the protagonist. Zixuan asks if she regretted breaking up with him now that he was handsome, and the girl responds that she wasn't that superficial. Another girl appears saying she wanted to go after Lin Mo, asking if she could help her, mentioning that it didn't matter if he had surgery or not because she always liked him for his personality. Then Yan Hui calls her a hypocrite, hearing what she said as she thinks hypocrisy was thinking that was surgery, and if she could get those beautiful legs of Lin's, she wouldn't care if they were fake or not, saying she would go after the boy alone. Meanwhile, Lin Mo was walking through the school. Then Mianabi appears, saying she was there to apologize for everything, mentioning that it had been sudden for her, and she still didn't want to get married. Accepting the apology, the protagonist walks away, asking Lin to wait. The young man questions if she had more to say, affirming that she really felt sorry for everything she had said. Lin continues to walk, making Yan Hu wonder why he was so cold, supposing she might have been the reason he changed so much. Outside the school, Lin Mo hopes no one is on the rooftop, while walking, he encounters the girl whose ribs he had broken, wondering if she wanted to steal his spot on the rooftop again. Looking back, the girl notices that Lin has been following her for some time, mentioning that he looked like the protagonist, but that man was more handsome. Then Lin walks past the girl, feeling relieved because she thought the young man would talk to her, questioning if he was also going to the rooftop. Catching up with the boy, she notices he was climbing the stairs. Quickly passing him, she heads to the front. Noticing that the girl was in a hurry, he wonders if she really wanted to steal his spot questioning how a mere mortal wanted to do that. Their eyes meet and each perceives the other's intention. Quickly, they start running to secure their places. The girl thinks the protagonist was very annoying, questioning if he shouldn't behave like a gentleman. Also, how can he run so fast? Mentioning that she wanted to give him an advantage, but if she lost, it would be a disgrace for the women of that world. Meanwhile, a girl watches the commotion. Back to the two, the girl asks why Lin was running and the young man asks the same of her. 
Then she questions why he wasn't running after her, but the young man says he would never do that. Irritated, the woman says not to talk to her like that. A boy like him who didn't care about ladies could never get married. Lin Mo wonders how an emperor could think about marriage, a man of high status from a generation of great emperors, responding that she wasn't kind either because she was fighting just for the rooftop. Arriving at the rooftop door, they block the entrance. Suddenly, they start fighting to see who gets there first. Lin in turn thinks he would act to use brute force to clear his path, which ends up with him grabbing the girl's chest. She ends up feeling embarrassed. The protagonist, also embarrassed, feels that sensation. Quickly reaching the rooftop first, saying that from now on that place belonged to him. The girl questions how he dared to do that and if he knew who she was mentioning that just now he had done that. Saying he had touched her, the protagonist approaches her, giving a slap to the poor girl, affirming that she'd have touched him first, thinking that he almost forgot that men in that world were fragile and couldn't act carelessly. Then the girl calls the protagonist shameless. Taking out his phone, Lin says if she didn't leave, he would call the police. The girl in turn says she was already getting angry. Recording the woman, the young man asks her to say what she had said before, but then she seems to remember something, recalling that women who hit men in that world were despised, and if she were caught doing that, she wouldn't be able to attend that school anymore. Thinking that he had taken advantage of that to hit her even if he said it to someone, it was certain that the one who would be believed was the protagonist, saying that this time he would leave but next time he wouldn't lose, claiming that it was very complicated to deal with men. Lin thinks she was happy to have gotten out of that situation, mentioning that the girl was very annoying. Remembering that there was an update on the news from this morning, she grabs her phone. Looking at the news, she ends up surprised. The news reported numerous chickens on a farm that were suspected of being infected with a virus, which ended up turning them into dried corpses. Observing that chicken, Lin Mo seems to recognize it, remembering that the demon from before had a sword that would suck any creature that touched it down to the bones, but in her final battle, that sword had exploded and then her own sword also exploded trying to protect her, sending her to that world. Wondering if that demon was really dead, since to become immortal Lin had to follow the path of heaven, but in exchange she only had to kill people to gain her power, that's why she needed to investigate what was happening. Sometime later it was already sunset, as Lin was leaving the girls were so fawning over the protagonist. Yunshan appears, saying she would accompany him to Yu Tang's house, but Lin Mo says it's not necessary. Even so, the girl insists on going mentioning that Yu Tang and her sister were very dangerous. She tells the story of a time when a boy was tricked by his classmates and ended up with a tragic fate. However, the boy thinks he doesn't want to go to that place, asking Yunshan not to get too close to him, but the girl says he's interpreting things wrong. Entering, she's surprised to ask if he wouldn't see Yu Tang again, and the boy says he has more important things to do. Yantra questions if he didn't know that she had been looking for him all summer, and the young man says they would discuss that later. The girl in turn asked him not to worry because she would explain everything to Yu Tang the next day, remembering that if she helped him, Lin might end up thanking her. Meanwhile, the young man was in a car, thinking that the farm was outside the city and if that demon was there, he would eliminate her even if it damaged his soul. Sometime later, Lin Mo arrives at the location, thinking that he still had little soul left but it would be necessary to use it. He apparently starts to use some magic. Looking at a house, he notices demonic Kai, thinking that it was extremely strong, assuming that demon had really survived. Looking to the side, he notices someone approaching. A person says they had seen the protagonist from afar. Taking off a helmet, it was Yu Tang asking what he was doing in the middle of nowhere. Lin, for his part, wonders how she got there, thinking it couldn't be a coincidence meeting in the middle of nowhere. She says she called a taxi to take her home, but on the way, she realized it was taking her out of the city, so she decided to get out in the car. Irritated, the girl asks if he still thinks he's that ugly fat guy from before, now that he's handsome, he'll meet plenty of girls who only think with their lower brains. Mentioning that handsome young men are the main targets when it comes to trafficking, she says he shouldn't forget to warn someone when he gets into trouble. Asking him to hold her helmet, she says she's going to call the police, asking if he remembers the car's license plate, but the boy replies that he doesn't. Then the girl says she's going to deliver some messages and will be right back. Lin, for his part, thinks that Yu Tang was just immortal, but could also track demonic energy. Then he realizes she has returned. Mentioning that losing weight was causing her problems, she asked him to hand over her helmet. Putting it on her head as she says she didn't want to get into trouble. However, she feels embarrassed, thinking that the boy was more handsome than those motorcyclists on the internet. Lin wonders if that was a protective helmet, and the girl thinks he really was handsome, questioning how she had that ridiculous idea, mentioning that it was her customized helmet and if she broke it, she would give it as a prize to the mean girls, saying that it only gives her a headache. Looking where the girl was heading, he notices it was exactly where the demonic energy was. As he was worried, he would go see what was happening. Returning to Yu Tan, the girl seems to pass through a place she shouldn't, where an old woman notices her, questioning who the girl was looking for. Quickly, Yu Tan pulls out a gun, saying she had a lot of courage not to run when she saw her. Desperately, the woman says she shouldn't place a prank because it was against the law. Then Yu Tang asks if she knew the demon cultivator's wall, 
but the woman says she was just a chicken farmer. Stealthily, she draws a dagger from her sleeve. Yu Tang, perceiving the woman's intention, fires her weapon. With her arm bleeding, the woman begs not to be killed. The girl mentions she was a good actress, but would have to be better to deceive her. Using a spell that turns her weapon into a sword, even so, the woman insists she was not a demon cultivator and had nothing to do with that incident. Yu Tang said as she is now only capable of refining chickens but in the future, could be refining people, mentioning she had little cultivation time, but was better than a monk. Then the woman asks how she didn't notice that, saying she would go further if she refined her. Yu Tang says that was encouraging, quickly advances on the demon, stating that the result wouldn't change, stabbing her sword into the monster's chest. Lin Mo, watching from the background, thinks that energy seemed to be from a demonic sword. Yu Ting, in turn, seems surprised, for her sword had no effect. The girl thinks that energy was completely different from the demon cultivators she had encountered before, questioning what that creature was. In an instant, the monster advances on Yu Tang, where she narrowly dodges, assuming that if she took that attack, she would surely die. Again, the creature envelops magic in its fist. Then Yu Tang takes a piece of paper. It was a spiritual talisman thrown towards the monster. However, it has no effect. Where the demon again attacks the girl. Suddenly, she is thrown against the wall, as she coughs blood as she thinks she couldn't believe she had lost. At that moment, the protagonist appears to defend the girl, who asks what he was talking about because he should leave that place. Lin asks to speak politely, but Yu Tang orders him to leave. Quickly, the young man seems to use a skill, where the demon stops moving. Yu Tang, surprised, asks why it stopped, but Lin says it was nothing special, for it was he who was there. While fleeing, the demon falls to the ground. Before the monster, a giant aura surround the protagonist. The girl mentions that the pressure was very strong and she couldn't breathe, wondering who Lin really was. Meanwhile, in another place in Guiyuan in the city of Lil Bay, a man says that Tao was what gave birth to heaven and earth, encompassing all things. And the man seems surprised, questioning why the bell was ringing and if it shouldn't only happen when there was a great event in the world. With the master kneeling, his subjects ask if he was okay. Then the man says the father of Tao had just reincarnated. Returning to the protagonist, the boy asks where that demon was. However, the creature had already lost all its spirit, mentioning it was just a fragment of the sword. Even so, it didn't matter. Using a skill, the young man seems to absorb that spirit, thinking it could be a trap by the demon to reveal his location but was a good item to cultivate when his demonic nature is eliminated. The only thing he had to do now is to take care of that woman. Behind the protagonist, Yu Tang says he was very handsome. Using magic, the boy orders her to forget what she had seen. Then Yu Tang faints. Observing the girl, Lin thinks her spiritual root was of the highest quality and that was incredible, even in his world, but that meant there was a good place to cultivate in that world, otherwise it would be impossible to reach that level. Soon after using his skill, the boy feels a pain in his chest, assuming he had overloaded his residual soul, thinking he should leave that place, where he ends up encountering two girls mentioning he was very handsome, and if they would take him to a nice place but Lin asks to let him go or they would regret it. Then the girl says he was acting tough, asking him to be a little more gentle. Irritated, the protagonist thinks that as his soul was damaged, he couldn't use his strength. Grabbing his face, the woman says he should obey her. Meanwhile, Yu Tang was behind the two, asking them to get out of her way, throwing a punch at the woman who merrily dodges. The other woman tries to attack Yu Tang, but the girl dodges and counterattacks, quickly delivers a kick to the other, where she ends up macking them both out. Approaching Lin, she asks why he didn't defend himself because when encountering people like that, he should strike with all this strength at their weak point. The boy, questioning what the vital point was, here is Yu Tang respond that it was the chest and asks if he didn't even know how to defend himself. Leaving, the girl says she would take the young man to her house. When he was about to take off his helmet, Yu Tang asks why he did that, telling him to just get on the bike. Getting on the bike, the two head towards Lin's house. The protagonist thinks that in his past life, holding a girl without being in a relationship would be considered indecent, but in that world, they didn't think much about it. However, that vehicle was very fast, mentioning that with his sword, he could go faster than that. In the dead of night, the two arrive at their destination. Lin, thanking for the ride, asks how much he should pay and the girl questions what he was talking about. Calling him fat, she mentions that just a moment ago the boy was scared and the protagonist asks her not to call him that. Then Yu Tang says that before Lin didn't care when people called him that. In the middle of the conversation, the girl remembers something, saying that the protagonist had deceived her again and left her waiting. But the boy says his family taught him he should go home after school because he couldn't walk alone saying he had waited for her before. However, Yu Tang mentions that she had an emergency, then her phone starts ringing. Answering the phone, Yu Tang asks if everything was already done, affirming that the Tardy had a very powerful evil Kai. Mounting her bike, she says she had something to do. While heading to her destination, the girl stops at a corner, thinking that the protagonist's shampoo scent was bothering her. Returning to Lin, the boy thinks he needed to recover. Then Zixuan calls him, questioning if he was causing trouble with Yu Tang again. Yanwei, in turn, says the boy didn't know how to control his words and was trying to say that Yu Tang was a bit stressed. 
Lin, ignoring the two, continues heading towards his house. Inside his quarters, the boy sits next to his door, assuming that if he continued using his power, he could end up damaging his foundation. At least he got a sword fragment that he could use to cultivate. Soon after, someone knocks on the door. Yan Wei appears, saying she wanted to talk to the protagonist. Noticing she wasn't with Zixuan, he thinks the girl wanted to be alone. Then Yan Wei says it wasn't just about appearance, but the more time she spends with her cousin, the more she realizes she liked the protagonist. That's why she wanted to apologize for everything she had done, asking if his grandmother wouldn't want them to get married. Before she could continue talking, Lin closes the door. The girl, begging, asks him to believe her, saying they would get married. However, as Lin was an emperor, he didn't want to lower himself to that level, thinking that he thought he had already reached the maximum level of spiritual formation, but still had a long way to go. Starting to meditate, the boy considers it as mental resilience training. The next day at Lin's school, a girl calls the protagonist to eat. Noticing the boy ignored her, she mentions that he was very handsome but had a heart of ice, and he was getting more and more handsome, looking like a movie star. Meanwhile, Yan Hui, along with her group, were eating. Looking to the side, she nemesis a girl trying to call the protagonist to her table, who, without any remorse, ends up refusing. Sixuan asks what good it was to be handsome but be alone, and the other guy says he had questioned how he had lost weight, but he always ignored him. Observing the situation, Yan Hui seems uneasy. Getting up from the table, she says she would call the boy to her table since they were in the same class. Zixuan, irritated, asks why she would call him as the girl already knew he hated him. Reluctant, Yan Wei asks the boy to let her go, otherwise Lin could see and interpret something else. Irritated, Zixuan says he had no more respect for him, and if she went to get the protagonist, she didn't need to come back. However, the girl thinks that if she could have Lin Mo in her arms, she wouldn't regret anything in her life. Meanwhile, a group of girls was bothering the boy who wonders why all those women were disturbing him. Then Yu Tang calls the protagonist, ordering him to immediately go to her table. The boy is observing the commotion, suppose that Yu Tang supposedly liked Lin. Yan Wei, desperate, thinks that girl was the worst who would take Lin detention. The boy in turn can't believe that woman was still calling him fat. Looking to the side, he finds that girl from before. Quickly, he starts walking, remembering that there was a possibility of her stealing his place on the terrace. As the young man walked, Yu Tang noticed the boy in a hurry. The girl next to her said that Lin had become very arrogant after becoming a bit more handsome, asking who he thought he was. Furious, Yu Tang sent a message to the boy, saying she would kill him after class. Back to Lin, the boy was approaching the terrace. However, that woman was already in his resting place, saying that since she arrived first, Lin should leave. Refusing to leave, the young man mentioned that he had won the race before, so that place belonged to him. The girl said she had let him win because he was a man, asking if he thought she would lose. Then the boy suggested they go downstairs to bet on another race to settle it once and for all. Irritated, the empress said that the boy only knew how to run and asked if he had any other skill besides that because if he continued that way, he would never get married. Lin Mo in turn said it was nothing special, saying he could choose any game and he would beat her in any of them. With a sly smile, the girl seemed to be planning something. Grabbing a cup of pieces, she said they would play that game. Observing that in the girl's hand, Lin wondered if it could be what he was thinking. Then the empress asked if he knew how to play that game and said that if he won besides leaving the terrace, he could ask for anything. Sitting on the floor, the boy mentioned that he wouldn't be able to fulfill any of her wishes even if he tried. Convinced, the girl thought she had spent thousands of years playing that game and her skills were of another level. Little did she know that the protagonist had also spent many years playing that game, known as one the best in his world. About to start the game, the two stare at each other. In the middle of the match, both sides were completely focused. Realizing he still hadn't won, Lin wondered if that woman was a reincarnation of a player of that game. Sometime later, the match continued until sunset. The girl observing the situation realized the match was uncertain, and if she wasn't careful, she could lose. The boy said that if she didn't know what to do, she should give up. However, the empress mentioned that classes were over, so be she feel proud to have reached that point and therefore should go home. Right after, Lin's phone started ringing thinking he could never give up and would only leave that place with a victory. The girl in turn couldn't stand the noise of that foam anymore. Taking a picture of the board, she mentioned they could continue the match the next day. However, when she was about to get up, she felt a shock in her leg from sitting for so long, where she unintentionally fell on top of the protagonist. Lin in turn felt a very cozy sensation. A moment later, the girl was completely embarrassed, saying she couldn't believe it. Then Lin slapped his forehead saying that next time she should keep her magical spheres away from him or he would call her a pervert. The girl thought it was already the second time he had hit her and when her strength returned, she would make him regret it. But during the night, she would study tactics to win her match. Outside the school, Lin Mo picked up his phone to answer the call, realizing it was Yu Tang calling him. Furious, the girl questioned why he didn't answer and where he was. Ordering the boy to go to the school gate, the young man thought that Yu Tang spent most of her time at school playing games and even so had a high level of cultivation, so he would find out today what her secret was. Near the gate, Yu Tang asked why he took so long. 
questioning the reason for staying at school after skipping all classes. However, he said he was just sleeping, leaving the girl surprised, saying she had come to pick him up for a rematch in that game. Handing him a helmet, she told him to get on the bike. A while later, the two arrive at Yu Tang's house, and the protagonist was surprised that the place was so big. As they walked through the house, Yu Tang asked him not to touch anything. Looking around, Lin Mo thought that the only thing in that place was games, and there was nothing about cultivation. The girl, in turn, questioned if the boy wasn't worried about being in that place because a woman had invited him to her house, and the boy didn't ask anything. Then the protagonist asked if she intended to do something to him. Mocking the boy, she mentioned it was a good idea because now he wasn't fat anymore, and it wouldn't be a bad idea. Without any compassion, the boy struck her in the belly, ordering her not to touch him. Seeing the damage he had done, the young man thought he didn't know that martial art was so good because it could knock out a cultivator in seconds. Getting up, Yu Tang says she was just kidding, but the protagonist said he didn't like that. Irritated, the woman announces that they will play more than 300 rounds, thinking she would defeat the boy and make him pay for everything he had done. Sometime later in the game, Lin Mo wins a round against the girl. Then he wins two more times. That cycle continued countless times without a single victory for the girl. With her head down, Yu Tang realizes she is losing 47 to 0. Standing up, the boy mentions he needs to go. Stealthily, he seems to place something under her table. Asking for one more game, Yu Tang says he could stay at her house. But the young man says they will continue another day. Saying she would take him to his house, Lin Mo responds that he will take a taxi. The thing the protagonist had placed under the table starts to fall. Seeming to come to life, it begins to move. Meanwhile, in some building, Yan Hui in her room was thoughtful about Lin skipping afternoon classes, wondering where the boy had gone. Then she receives a call. Someone asks her to check the group messages because something unbelievable had happened. Looking at the messages on her phone, she sees a photo of the protagonist with Yu Tan. Irritated, the girl starts knocking everything off her desk, questioning how she dared take her Lin Mo to her house, wishing that woman would have a motorcycle accident. However, cursing her wouldn't help anything. Then a purple crystal asks if she wanted revenge. Looking around the room, she asks who is there, asking them to show themselves. However, the crystal says its identity is irrelevant. Then a malicious face appears, saying it could do whatever she wanted. Yan Hui, in turn, asks if that monster was a witch from those novels. Embarrassed, that creature thinks the woman had nothing in place of her brain, saying it was the number one divine sword of the immortal world that ended up shattering, and if she helped it recover, it would make her immortal, without even thinking. Yan Hui accepts the proposal asking for help to become immortal. At that moment, that creature seems to cast a spell on the girl. A purple crystal appears on Yan Hui's forehead and the monster orders her to open her mind, letting it merge into her body. Asking why she didn't feel any power, the spirit questions what she desired. Suddenly, the girl asks to be taught hypnosis, and the monster mentions there were countless skills like that. In her thoughts, Yan Hui supposes that with that skill, Lin Mo would be entirely hers. Meanwhile, the protagonist is riding in a taxi thinking he couldn't use his powers recklessly and that Yu Tang should reveal her secrets. Quickly, the boy seems to make a hand signal. At Yu Tang's house, that doll received a signal. Observing the girl, he notices she is playing, questioning if Yu Tang was a fake cultivator, wondering how she reached that level. Furious, Yu Tang can't believe she lost to a stinky fat boy. Lin Mo, in turn, gets irritated with the girl's words, mentioning that now he will crush her in all games. Then Yu Tang remembers she has something to do. Watching her leave the room, Lima wonders where the girl was going. In the room, Yu Tang is changing clothes. Putting on a suit, she says that it will work. Opening a closet, there are numerous combat weapons. The protagonist thinks that even if all that was of low quality, they were still hard to get in this world. Starting to run, the doll jumps onto the girl's clothes, thinking at this time he would discover her secrets. Sometime later, Yu Tang arrives at building, thinking she should find out what shampoo the protagonist used because it was very fragrant. Inside that building, the girl approaches a door. Meanwhile, someone says they should raise their glasses to celebrate the newlyweds. In that place, a wedding was taking place and the woman mentions that the bride will give a speech. Taking the microphone, the woman thanks all the people who came despite their busy schedules. Meanwhile, Yu Tang sits in her place, thinking that now she just had to wait for everything to end. After a while, the other woman declares that the wedding ceremony between Lin Yu and Xiu Xiu is over, and now the party could begin. Returning to the two newlyweds, his wife asks if he was very tired but the man asks her not to worry because he just needed to change clothes and drink something. While they were talking, someone approaches the two lovebirds. It was Yu Ting standing in front of them. Seeing who it was, the boy becomes desperate. The bride, in turn, asks if something was wrong. Then Yu Ting says that now that her wish had been fulfilled, it was time to go. Starting to transform, the man asks if she thought fulfilling her wishes was that easy. At that moment, that boy transforms into a werewolf. When he was about to attack, Yu Tang used a talisman. Dodging the attack with a jump, she drew her sword, attacking the wolf from above. With one strike, he was knocked to the ground. Holding his neck, she thanked the girl, and in a matter of seconds, his head disconnected from his body. Desperate, his bride tried to save the man. In his thoughts, he apologized to the woman because he would never see her again, mentioning that this form was a stupid way to die. 
Returning to human form, his wife ran into his arms, begging him not to die, ordering them to call an ambulance to save him. Furious, the woman said she would kill the girl. Yu Dang in turn mentioned that she didn't know her husband as he was an expert in draining energy from women, turning them into slaves, saying she was just doing her job and it was nothing personal, using a talisman to make them forget everything they had witnessed. Right after, the bride fainted, calling someone Yu Tang says she had finished her job and now they should take care of the rest. Meanwhile, that doll fell from the girl. Running towards the man, Lin Mo realized it was a shape-shifting fox that would be very useful. Lin Mo decides to save the fox feeling it would be useful, and thus begins to perform the soul reincarnation spell. The golden aura of his paper doll begins to rise towards the fox. The body of the former fox man starts having its soul extracted. A soul moves towards the doll, which has its hands crossed and ends up entering it. Thus the object completely changes its form to one with long silver hair. The small one starts running desperately. And 20 minutes later he reaches the hand of someone who is waiting for him. That person is our protagonist who is outside the building. The soul of the man thinks he is going to die so by luck he managed to get revenge but regrets not being with his beloved. Soon someone calls in by his name, Chen Chiu Shu, and asks if the fox truly wants to die or if he prefers to live. Opening his eyes in that abyssal darkness, the man admits he doesn't want this to be the end of his life. He still has much to say to Zhou Lin Yu and no matter the cost, he still desires to live. Our protagonist informs him that you will give him a new life and in exchange he must serve him for 10 years. Thus, the small one opens his purple eyes, revealing an adorable appearance now of a young fox man with long gray hair. He looks around at the ritual he is in, seeing our protagonist who remains silent. Su Xiu has never heard of such powerful magic and wonders if it was this young man who summoned him. Soon, he looks up, recognizing that this is the most powerful man he has ever known in his entire life. The small one ends up falling to his knees inside the ritual. He introduces himself as Chen Siu Xiu and says he is there to serve his master expressing great gratitude for this opportunity to be under his orders. Lin Mo desires that he tell him everything he knows about cultivation in this world. The fox promptly agrees and asks where he should start, which our young protagonist replies that he wants to know about the cultivation method. A small apprentice explains that due to the scarcity of energy in this realm, cultivators travel to other secret realms. They are completely limited because all are controlled by powerful clans and families. He then reaffirms that even an ordinary practitioner would not be able to join a sect without connections or background. Everyone is taken in by the clans but only to be used as furnaces and eventually destroyed for cultivation. Our protagonist realizes that this has become an evil cultivation practice which the small one confirms, stating that this logically happened due to the lack of energy. And logically, the cultivator community has always hunted down the users of these evil sources. Our protagonist asks if they resemble the cultivator Zhao Yutan. With a brief smile, the fox confirms and then says that this girl is not only the most talented but also from the Zaf family, one of the three great families. The other one questions whether there is an immortal realm, to which the small one says he does not know. Quickly the young man shouts and asks to visit his beloved during these ten years of service, to which the protagonist agrees but instructs him never to reveal himself. Completely proud, he never imagined he would find such a generous master and accepts that it is very easy to please the immortals. But the next day, he ends up being impressed while inside a backpack. He realizes that his master is actually someone completely unexpected. Being an ordinary high school student, but he then thinks that he must be some sort of boss of that place. The fox thinks that our protagonist is incredibly popular and that all the women are staring at him. Assuming that our hero is the ultimate person, he thinks that if he were a woman, he would also be hitting on our protagonist. But, completely clueless, he wonders what the young man has in mind since he can't go a minute without thinking about the list of things. Soon, our protagonist arrives at his seat, but he nemesis something strange. Some stacks are there underneath. Lin Mo wonders if it's from that annoying friend of his name Song Yanshu. His ex Dian Hui approaches, saying she remembered his favorite snacks and bought them for him, and Lin Mo can't believe it was her. The cousin of her boy approaches, asking what she is doing and becomes extremely angry. She claims that our hero is her fiancé and that it's normal to pamper him a little, which makes the man completely furious. With tears in his eyes, he prepares to slap the girl while calling her a bitch. Yanabi grabs his hand with extreme force while telling the boy to stop. Our protagonist is impressed that his cousin couldn't even manage to slap a woman. The girl says she will only say this once and ends up stating that she will punish him if he continues bothering our boy. This leaves the purple-haired boy completely helpless and crying. He runs away from there, leaving the girl alone. She says that if anyone bothers him he can call her and she'll come back to solve everything for him. The girls think it's ironic that she now shows interest in the protagonist since he's become bolder as he's gotten more attractive. Soon noon arrives and we can see the school cafeteria. A blue-veared girl calls for the blonde saying that a girl named He Yanhui is stealing her man. But the president says they are a bunch of idiots and assumes the girl can have the fat guy since she's not interested in him. Soon a certain presence catches her attention. It's the protagonist's ex who shows up with a smug and malicious expression. She ends up calling out Lin Mo's name, who's our protagonist. 
thus inviting him to eat with her. The blue-haired girl thinks she's trying to provoke and therefore tells Yu Tang not to take it seriously, but with extreme brutality the blonde says that if the protagonist annoys her, then she will give him a beating. Soon, anger appears on our hero's face, thus, he leaves the area with his ex who is convinced she can win him over. He can't believe he lost his temper after so many years of cultivation and thinks he still has much to learn. In his pocket, the small fox thinks his master is truly incredible since even someone like Zhao Yutang is jealous because of him. Curious, the girl asks if the boy really complain about her, but the blue-haired one just says to ignore it since she can't hit a boy. She decides to forget about the fat guy and then starts thinking about the girl since she's being very bold. Our protagonist finally reaches the school's ground floor. The dark-haired girl while eating a pastry tells him to hurry up. Our protagonist notices the immense hostility and reflects that she must be angry about the previous day. He sits down and then makes his first move in the game. She knew that our protagonist would make things difficult for her, but still she had already thought of a solution before any of this happened. Impressed, he admits that the girl is really good at this game, but suddenly his stomach lets out a hungry growl. With the bag in hand, he stares at her with a somewhat blank look. Then he opens it, revealing a lunchbox inside. He ends up breaking his chopsticks to start eating. The other one assumes that this is a matter of respect as he is eating instead of playing, but our protagonist excuses himself, saying it's lunchtime. She thinks that if he keeps this up, soon enough he'll be fat again, but soon a question arises about the fat guy who was here on the terrace. Our protagonist says he has never seen anyone of that profile around. Angry, she admits that just thinking about that boy makes her ribs ache because of his weight, but her expression quickly changes to surprise when she sees something on her phone. 